Hi and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm going to be talking to Brentford fan Pete. This is a, from a neutral fan's point of view. I know I'm very biased on the Tottenham Stadium and of course Tottenham Football Club. Now uh, Pete is from a sporting website called Sporting Me. Pete, I just want to get your thoughts on Tottenham are now moving in their brand new stadium, five home games left. Um, Tottenham have got to play Palace, Huddersfield, Brighton, West Ham and Everton. Um, how do you feel that Tottenham are actually moving stadiums mid-season? I think it's going to be difficult, to be honest with you. But I think it's a great little boost for the fans. And I think it's probably a great boost for the players as well. Yeah. You know, it kind of really gives them a, a kick to, to carry on the season. So it's exciting. I think they'll do okay. What have you seen of the stadium and what really impressed you about it? Well, I haven't seen loads, to be honest with you. But I love the fact that it's on the same site. I mean, it's exactly literally next door, so you're not moving to a different location. Mm. You're just going to the same place, just yeah. literally down the road. And I, I just feel nothing changes from that point of view. So you, you kind of keep the history of that. I, I really like that idea. And I love the fact that the club have also incorporated White Hart Lane so much into the new stadium. Absolutely. Yeah, you want to keep the history of before, but you're kind of moving forward with a new stadium and new facilities, more importantly. Now, as a, as a neutral fan, obviously you don't even support a Premier League team. I don't. Um, Not yet. Not yet, guys. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah. How do you see it? Um, obviously, um, Tottenham are now going for a top four place. Uh -huh. it, it, it looks highly likely that um, Tottenham, Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea, two of those clubs are going to get Champions League and two are going to get Europa League. Does this give Tottenham a, a huge advantage? Um, because... You know, do you do you see that Tottenham are going to win those five Premier League games? Do you, do you think we've got an advantage over those clubs now? I do. I think the fact that it kind of gives them a new star, and then, and then, you know, when you get to the end of the season, you play lots of games. You know, a little bit of fatigue kicks in. You know, it's really difficult to keep it going. And I think that moving in at the last, for the last few games is going to mm. give you a, that little bit of a kick start. I think you'll do. I think you'll do well. I think you'll win them. Yeah. Do you, do you actually see that Tottenham um, actually winning from the off? Because I know some sometimes when teams move into a brand new stadium, it's very very difficult for them. I do. I think your first game is Palace, isn't it? Mm. You know, and I, I think they win. No offence against Palace. I mean, it's amazing that you're playing Palace because that goal that scored in the last seconds kind of changed history, really, didn't it? Yeah. You know, in the FA Cup with Millwall. Yeah. You know, because you would have played Brighton instead. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the fact that it's now Palace, they're a decent team. They're dangerous. But I think they're one of the teams that I feel you can definitely beat, absolutely. Now, Pete, um, last week Tottenham drew Manchester City in the Champions League, of course, two English clubs yeah. against one another. Um, Manchester City are flying high at the moment. Yeah. Their last Champions League game, they won 7-0 at home to Schalke. Yeah. How do you see that, that tie going over the two leagues? I think, do you know something? I think it's really interesting because um, I think it's a really, really bad draw for Man City, to be honest with you. I don't think Man City are going to want to play you because everyone's going to think, oh, definitely Man City is going to win that game, you know, and you know, and I don't. I think Tottenham are a dangerous team. So if I was Man City, you know, and I, and I think they're getting a little bit fatigued, and the fact that you've got this new start as such, I actually, if you ask me, I actually fancy Tottenham. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, as a neutral, I really do. I mean, Man City the other day struggled to beat Swansea, yeah. and Swansea beat Brentford. Otherwise, we would have played Manchester City and they beat them 3-2 and scored three goals in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So I think City are just starting to find it a little bit tough and I think the new start for Tottenham, you know, I think it'll be dangerous. So I think it's actually a really bad draw for Man City rather than Tottenham. Yeah. I had hoped for um, a, a European side rather than an English side because, of course, that, that game is going to be the first ever European game at the stadium. So Barcelona would have been incredible, wouldn't it? It would. You just want to trip would. to Barcelona as well. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Pete, talking about the uh, the Premier League, um, which clubs um, this season have really impressed you, and and who, who, who do you think is going to win the Premier League? Uh, that's do you know, I've still got a sneaky feeling Liverpool might do it. They're still there, they're hanging in there, mm. and I just think City are kind of the season's coming to an end. I know they won a few games well, but I've got I think Liverpool can do it this time. Yeah. I really do. So I I I go with Liverpool. I think I think City. The one about Man City winning the quadruple, winning the four, I think suddenly they'll find themselves out of Europe, because I think Tottenham will turn them over, and I think they might struggle at the end of the season to win the treble as well. Yeah. I think they'll probably win the cup. I think they'll win the Well, they're, they're, Manchester City are still in every competition. I know. I reckon they'll win two of them, but I don't think they'll win the European, and I don't think they'll win the league. Yeah. Um, Talking about teams that impressed me, by the way, I have to mention Wolves. 
because um, Wolves were in the championship last year. Now so they've played Brentford, and to be honest with you, they pretty well had a, a champion, a Premier League team. To be honest, you know they really did. People like Jota and stuff like that. And Wolves have had a very good season. They're a dangerous team, mm. and I think they're going to build from that. I really do. I think Wolves are going to be a a top ten Premier League team. I must say I, I completely agree because the, um, the the games I've been to this season, home and away, um, Wolves have been very very yeah. impressive, and their and their fans have been exceptional as well. Yeah. Full voice. I, yeah. I agree with that. Now um, you're a Brentford fan, as I said at the start yeah. of the video. Um, they're building their new stadium. Yeah. Now what's going on with that? Well, it's exciting for us, you know. It's sad because we're leaving Griffin Park as well. Griffin Park named after the Griffin Pub because we are the only team that had four pubs on each corner, you yeah. know. And obviously that's changed. In fact, we only got three now. One's already gone. And obviously, when we move to the new ground, you know, we're not going to have that. And and I feel that's a shame to them. So I was really proud of that fact, you know. And uh, I think maybe it would have been nice if they had like a maybe a little bar on each corner of the ground, yeah. which they're not not doing, you know, naming the, the pubs of the history. Because I think it's really important to, to keep the history of the club when you move to a new ground. And obviously, Griffin Park's a really tough place to go to. Mm. You know, the atmosphere is, is we're close to the pitch, and you worry about how the new ground will be. It's a seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty seater, which is pretty well one stand for you Tottenham fans. <laughs> seventeen and a half thousand. It's fans one stand, itself, isn't it? Yeah. It's one stand. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you ever a actually have a pint in each each pub? I've been there. Yeah, the I've done, we've all done all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I Brilliant. Think I, in the old days, mate, the plays used to do the same as well. Yeah, Stan Bowles used to play for Brentford. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the plays used to go in the pubs beforehand. <laughs> Pete, how are Brentford doing at the moment? We're doing really well. We're in a, we're established championship team, to be honest with you. And we don't really want to go to the Premier League yet. We're not ready for it. We need to move to the new ground. And once we move to the new ground, the infrastructure will be there. We're a dangerous team. We don't really want to play us. Yeah, yeah we are because you know, you know, on that on our day, we play really good passing football. We keep the ball really well, and we're exciting. But we don't keep any clean sheets either. So you never know what's going to happen. So uh, I'm really happy with the way that we're moving forward. We've got an infrastructure, but we've got to keep those players. We struggle to keep our best players, yeah. Yeah. You know, which is a real problem. Pete mentioned earlier um, you run a website called Sporting Me. Um, it, it might be launching again. Tell, tell people a little bit about that. Well, yeah, don't look at it yet, guys, because it's, it's kind of in mothballs. But I used to do a competition called um, Predict the Score. And I'm looking to maybe do that again next year, maybe with you, Chris. Which is just a load of fun, really. Yeah, yeah you know? good fun. And, uh, and now, instead of that, I'm actually running a, a cruising website. It's called Cruises for Solos. It's really a website for people who can um, cruise solo. You know, and it gives them, if you cruise as a solo person, it costs loads of money. Yeah. Because a lot of cabins are for two people, for couples and stuff. This helps people get cruises. Uh, some cruise lines out there have solo cabins for single people. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily single people, solo people. Yeah. So I would say, I know it sounds funny, <laughs> cruises, <laughs> check it out, cruises for solos, guys. Yeah. You can get a great deal. I'm sure a lot of you Tottenham fans cruise as well. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking forward, I'm going on the cruise in November. I'm looking forward to watching the game, crossing the track, crossing the Atlantic, and watching the game in the bar. Tottenham at the new ground. I'll have a drink with you guys then, yeah? Excellent, yeah. excellent. And also, what I would say, Chris, by the way, what you haven't mentioned, because you move in from next year, I do think that next year might be tougher for you. Mm. I have to say that, because I think this year, I think the excitement of moving in the new ground is going to be great, and I think it's going to really lift you, but next year, it will be a little bit harder, because then, every single game you're playing is like a final for all your teams, yeah? Because it's the first time they've played at an exciting new ground. And not only that, it's the first time the fans have gone there. Because I know when Brentford got to the championship, we were playing teams not played for years, like mm. Sunderland and Man City and people like that. So when we went to the away games, we had a huge support going there just to go to those grounds. And you're going to get that in your season yeah. next year. Yeah. But I do think after that next year, which could be a slight hiccup for you, and the hiccup for Tottenham, by the way, is finishing fifth or sixth. Yeah. You're never going to finish worse than that. You know? But I think after that, I think that new ground is going to be a massive advantage for you. And I think that Tottenham are going to be not just established as a top four team. I think you're realistically going to be probably maybe top two. And I think teams like Chelsea that don't have new grounds are going to slightly fall away from it. And I think they're going to struggle. So I think it's a really good move that we're doing. Well, Pochettino seems to be doing it year in, year out. It's his fifth season in charge and, and we're now constantly a, a Champions League team. Um, it does it does depend whether we spend the money on players in the summer. 
It um, does. I think, but I think the stadium would be a very, very tough place for a lot of teams to visit. I think when you move into a new stadium, Brentford have the same problem. It's always tough to spend money on players because you've got to spend money on the new ground all the time. It's been delayed, obviously, you know. And I think the problem that being able to invest in new players and the fact that for the fans and the opposition, it's a final every single game, mm. you know, it's going to be tough. Even though this year, I think it'd be great. And talk about your manager, you've got to keep him, by the way, yeah? Absolutely. Because I remember yeah. when he went to Southampton, Southampton had a really good manager, and they were sort of around about the sort of 10th, 11th in the Premier League, and they sat in the manager and brought this guy in from Portugal nobody had ever heard of. Mm. And I saw his interview on Sky Sports, and they were talking about, look out for this guy. This guy is highly rated, and he will take Southampton to the next level. And you need to keep him, because I think he's probably, in my view, he's, he's the best manager in the Premier League. Pete, I totally agree. Thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Come on, you Spurs.